takes to, can you hear me right now okay broadcast we are live we are live on youtube oh my goodness you can see me live on youtube <laughs> this is so cool um wow there's love da, 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 da. okay i'm i'm kind of pleasantly overwhelmed with this what's happening here welcome to the first ramp live streaming on youtube powered by lightstream this is vincent here in sunny colorado uh it's mid-november but it's very very nice out um looking out the window here in fort collins colorado uh very special guest who will be with in just a moment mr stephen healy from wiltshire uk who actually um i learned about lightstream through Mr. Stephen Healy and took his wonderful Udemy, Udemy class, Udemy class on Lightstream. Um, so really excited to have this very first show. Um, if you happen to be watching this, please share this uh, video as well. And this is a scene for those that have not um, seen this before this is a scene i have seven scenes set up here today i'm going to bring in scene two and what's really cool about scene two that's even cooler than than seeing the youtube logo is seeing mr stephen healy welcome stephen oh Oh, I have to send live. Look at that. I'm I'm updating the stream. Yep. I, I have to remember to do that. There you are. Welcome. Right. Once yeah, again. I can I can see that. I can see that. I'm <laughs> I can see that this is I can see I'm top right. You're top yes. left. There's a light stream banner, there's a ramp banner, and then there's a banner underneath. I'm yep, pretty good. I mean, be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You're giving vent to your artistic artistic capabilities, sir. You know, there's nothing better than drag and drop. I'll tell you, you know, the coding that uh, was needed, I think, in live, live streaming, Stephen, is it's something that once people get into it, it's so easy to take it for granted. And you've really seen the evolution of live streaming. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. I mean, it, basically, when all this current revolution began, which was sort of two years ago with Blab, uh, it was for, simply four people on screen. It was self-contained. It went nowhere near Facebook. And now, uh, today, we're on Lightstream, and we're going live to YouTube. And you've got graphics galore. You've got a whole range. You've got a toolkit you can actually use to enhance the live video. It's absolutely brilliant. And to give an example of that, uh, we have different scenes that we set up prior to the show. Okay as you know, and I have seven scenes that I created prior to the show. We're on scene number two <laughs> right now. Um, and each scene has layers. So um, like you were saying, you can drop in, well, what we can see here, we have the two video yep. cameras, yours and mine. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. Using my snowball blue microphone that we're using today. Um, I have pictures that I brought in, which are graphics powered by Lightstream, my ramp logo. And then I did a screenshot of part of your website, the, the top AG website. Um, yeah. Now today I'm not bringing in video, but you can actually bring in short video clips. Uh, I didn't want to get overwhelmed with the technology. I, that, that's basically, there's, there's so much that can be done with this. I mean, we're going to both going to have fun exploring this in the coming months. And I th I've got to say now, I, I've been asked to write a piece about what's going to happen in 2018. And I think Lightstream is going to happen in 2018. What are your thoughts? You know, I really agree with that. Um, now, who? I'm curious, who's asking you to write that? What is that for? Oh, oh. You, right, you froze for a moment there. So, yep. Yeah, and you've got a little bit of visual thing going on with... Uh, Actually, it's interesting. So for those that are new to Light, Lightstream, um, this is an incredible technology on the, am I doing okay with you now? Can you hear me okay? Oh yeah, you're fine now, you're fine now, yeah, it picked okay, up. Okay, it looks like the stream output is good. So um, who are you writing this for? 
this article. Sorry. You're writing the article about uh, oh, what's right. happening. Sorry. Ross, uh, every year, uh, Ross Brand publishes the thoughts of people who are active in the vid live video industry. And it's become an annual event. And to be invited is, well, it's just brilliant. Because um, I'm virtually the only person in the UK doing it. Um, so uh, you just asked to give your thoughts on what's going to happen in 2018. And my thoughts is that YouTube is going to happen in 2018. And Nightstream is going to push that. Yeah. Because I mean, when you saw this, I know your instant reaction was you were blown away. I was. I was blown away. And, I, you know, I like to be experimental and, and put myself out on the limb and try things that are, you know, a little bit uncertain at first, whether it's through the different ramp projects that I do or trying the different technology. Um, it's a little scary at first because there are all of these unknowns. You know, it's you're giving a performance. It's like being up on stage. I work with musicians who are putting themselves out there, very vulnerable, where... You know, you could forget what you're playing up there. You you never know if you're in front of an audience. Here, there are so many factors that that in, is involved with that. That's true. I mean, I I can I can see over the coming months uh, the artists that you are mentoring coming on here performing live, and it's going to be absolutely amazing. Well, you know, tapped into that, Stephen. Um, yeah. Is uh, and let's get into that in a moment. While I have the okay. screen up here, I thought it'd be really cool that to mention that you do uh, Udemy courses I'm seeing on here, and then you have different yep. live streaming that you do as well. So I think that that's, um, that's really good for people to know that you are really um, a trainer in that. Um, I think that's wonderful. And I'm gonna actually switch okay. screens as, okay. we, um, as we talk about this live streaming. Um, there you go. Okay. I did my switch uh, all in good time there. Look at that. Brilliant, brilliant. And I can I can see the, the change. And uh, you're on the left, I'm on the right. There's a photograph, group photo in the middle. And you're at the top. So that was just seamless, wasn't it? It just... It, it basically was, because I had a scene that I'd set up, this scene I set up prior to the show. Yeah. And uh, I basically clicked on it, so it came up. And then on the top right... I, I clicked on send to live, so then it was live streamed on YouTube as we are now live streaming. And if those if there are people that are watching this on my channel, not live, um, another great thing tied into this, Stephen, is after this live show, as you refer to the term repurposing, you know, yep. it'll be on your YouTube channel. When, that, that's right. Once you've finished the, the show, uh, YouTube processes the video, so you've got formats for HD, mobile and tablet and that takes about 20 minutes and then the hd recording is available now this is important if you go live on facebook facebook do not supply you with the same quality recording that youtube do and when you're actually repurposing things what you want to do is to be putting out a quality product when you repurpose to your blog or to your what you know wherever you repurpose it you want high quality and if you're a corporate and you want to go live and you want to use that perhaps as training videos, then HD quality is just mega important. It's important to point out that um, Athenocene was the prior name of Lightstream. Yes. And they purposely were had a temporary name and they came up with a great name, Lightstream. Certainly, um, light is making this all happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> True. Yeah. It is. It is. I mean, the, the, the model of this is I'm in, in wonderful Wiltshire in England and uh, you are miles away. Yeah. Yeah. Quite far. Just, we haven't met in 3D yet, but that's certainly. Um, uh, boy, that that could well happen. I don't think it'd be 2018, but it's, it's quite possible <laughs> yeah. uh, because you're on mountain time, aren't you? I mean, it's, it's sort of uh, 20 to 6 here, but with you, it's 20 to 10, 20 to 11. 20 to 11. Yeah, so across time zones. Mm -hmm. Yes. And how great now to talk about Lightstream for a moment. Again, again, okay. previously called Infinicine. At the 2016 
15th annual Chicago Innovation Awards. That's a big deal. Like you think about Chicago, obviously one of the centers of the world as far as yeah. everything. Um, think about the amount, I think it was over 600 or was it, I think it was over 600 entries mm -hmm. um, in this competition basically to show people what you've got, what is your innovation? It's certainly yeah. what is happening in the tech world uh, with live streaming is really progressing and they they were in this field the winners of that yeah in incredible i mean it's a very talented group of people there are about 15 employees at the moment mm -hmm. and uh half of those eight are engineers and they've produced this system from scratch and basically they started off by going with twitch which is the gaming world and they perfected the technology so that gamers could actually converse whilst playing a game so you've got the the game main screen and then users actually playing the game can actually chat and talk to each other live video and now uh, this is being brought to youtube in general and, and it's just amazing it's just amazing i mean um i'm blown away by this i really am it's, it's the first serious broadcast i've been on on youtube and uh, I'm impressed. Are you seeing your other ones? You haven't been serious? Were you telling jokes oh, no. the whole time? <laughs> right, no. I mean, I've done solo broadcasts, okay? Doing a ah. solo broadcast on YouTube, you can use Minicam, you can do a, a range of things. But in this particular instance, what you've got is that you're able, and you've done it beautifully, to combine graphics with text, with live video, in a, and, and create a work of art in actual fact. I mean, this is a moving work of art. That's a really good way to put it. I, I feel like it is. You can be highly creative with that. And um, the fo folks that you see in the screen there, Stu, uh, being yeah. the, the founder, and you're going to actually be speaking to him before too long. I Yeah, I'm interviewing Stu on uh, Tuesday. This coming Tuesday, live on YouTube. And uh, that will be round about uh, 6.30 my time, 1.30 Eastern, I think. But we've got to confirm that. So I'll come back with the time later. But I'm looking forward, forward to that. that on Tuesday, uh, especially as mm -hmm. you know, I mean, this is as the first serious use of it. And it's just so impressive. It's really fun. You know, I, I again, if you think about what's happening in the world technologically, and I just switched scenes again, yep. um, and I repositioned our cameras and so forth. Uh, this is really worth reading, we believe this is light stream. We believe yep. everyone has a story to tell. Our mission is to empower anyone with no experience or expensive hardware to share their love of gaming with a live audience. Now, this was made by a gaming company, as you mentioned, because when you want to have interactive gaming, first of all, there's a lot of processing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Happening. So they're yeah. able to put this like on the cloud. So you're not eating up all of the CPU on your computer. And you really want to be able to have it real time because if you're in the middle of a virtual you know virtual reality gaming battle literally the the difference between life and death is going to be yep. time yeah it is it is i mean i mean they that's sort of it, having perfected that then to bring it into the video chat arena uh is brilliant because we know that this technology works it's a great testing ground it's really true it's like putting it through its paces, you know, they have an incentive to, um, to make this very powerful. And so what you and I were talking about, and you were actually the one that really mentioned this to me first, because I think that at first it didn't quite dawn on me the potential power of what we're talking about here. Um, you had mentioned the idea of with what I'm doing with the ramp program of potentially having musicians on from around the world real time. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. And it opens a whole lot of doors because it makes it makes because it's such high quality. It means that musicians can come on and they can perform and the sound will be good, the video will be good and the promotion afterwards because as you said earlier the recording is available afterwards to be repurposed. Mhm. Mm it absolutely is. So this is kind of small print here for people to read, but basically that's Stu on the right. 
I'm not sure who the lady on the left is, if that's another one of the founders, perhaps. I'm not quite I'm not, sure. I'm not sure. But I'm not sure. I, I... The, th the main thing is, is it's not complicated. You know, like if you if you talk about like driving a car, you take a driving yeah. lessons. If we think back, there was quite a bit, Stephen, to remember. Obviously, safety first, right? Your whole spatial oh, yeah. relationships, muscle memory with your hands and your feet and your eyes and looking around. If you and I were to get in the car right now, we know mm -hmm. how to drive. It's pretty yep. simple, right? I mean, the dynamics right. are always changing. There's always different traffic flows. You go different routes. The weather changes. The car may behave differently. All, you might be in a different type of vehicle. Once you get the hang of what's going on here with Lightstream, it's basically exactly what they talked about. They said they want it to be fun, powerful enough to take any broadcaster to the next level. There is simply nothing else like it, and there's not. There isn't. There isn't. I haven't seen anything. I mean, I've been in this sort of arena for a couple of years now, and people have come and gone, and but there's no reason to touch that. That I'm going to say the versatility of this, mm -hmm. and the, the the sheer quality, the sheer quality. So yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah. Yeah, I'm having fun. We're here with Stephen Healy from Wiltshire UK. Devices. Devices, is actually, yes. Yeah, is actually the name of the, the town. And it was really uh, fun in preparation for uh, the show to uh -huh. um, get to know a little bit about your part of the world. Um, okay. And we, we had talked previously, and, and I knew a little bit. It's something that is yeah. so something that you would definitely not find in Colorado okay. um, absolutely would be the lock system that you have. Uh, indeed, indeed. And I thought it was so fun. And I actually found an, uh, kind of a couple, uh, the one picture I had seen before and the other I just brought up that has like a map from overhead yep. of the, mm -hmm. uh, yep. say, Kate Keen. Uh, it's the Kennet and Avon Canal. Kennington Avon, and uh, I mean, basically, it's a navigable, navigable canal. Its original use was the transportation of uh, materials from Bristol to London. So it would go across country on barges, and it was commercial, totally commercial. Um, and this was before the age of steam. This was before steam trains. So this was the main method of transport. It was faster. It was more cost effective than transporting things by road. Yeah. And Absolutely. Yeah. The, the problem that you face when you're building a canal is that the land levels change. <laughs> yeah, sure. And this in this is probably is is in fact the highest rise in land. Yeah. From there mm -hmm. to there. And you can't just sort of lift the boat. It's got to go up in stages. <laughs> so it goes through individual locks all the, the way up until it gets to the top and it's quite magical to watch it takes about three and a half hours uh for the crew to actually do that and i a couple of weeks ago i was i i use this for my training because my major pastime is walking mm -hmm. and the canal is a great place to walk because it's out in the countryside there's no traffic whatsoever yeah. and you can walk for mile after mile and you might go to the odd bar but essentially speaking it is out in the fresh air uh, well, in fact, actual fact, there's a bar which is about seven miles that way, and that's that's sort of the halfway, and then you have a drink and then you just walk back. Um, but the locks are absolutely an amazing feat of engineering. I mean, the principle is very simple. It's just to to lower the water level so that the boat can go down, the gradually down. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is the largest in the UK, and it's about uh, half a mile from where I live. Oh, that's real close. Yeah. When was that originally built? I thought I was I was having a little wasn't sure. That goes back quite a ways. It, early eighteen hundreds, I think. Early eighteen my goodness. Yeah. Wow, that's uh, really incredible. Yeah. Um because I say it precedes the age of steam. I mean, as soon as the, the railways came along and trains began to go between Bristol and London, then this went into ruin. And in the 1960s, those locks didn't exist. They were in a state of disrepair uh, because this was a commercial enterprise. It, you actually paid to actually ship things from Bristol to London. 
So it was a commercial enterprise run by a private company. And of course, when the money stopped, the upkeep stopped. So this fell into disrepair, but volunteers uh, from around Wiltshire have actually brought the canal back into being, and you now see it in the condition it is. And, and that's purely and simply by volunteer effort. That's really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's great. And um, a little more history mm -hmm. uh, in devices here. You know, we have a Budweiser plant, <laughs> which uh, is northeast part of town here where, you know, they produce millions of bottles of beer there a little bit. And they have the Clydesdales. It's like their mascot. Yep. A little right. bit more quaint, a little bit smaller. You have this um, great yeah. brewery in town. Yeah, this is a, 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 a my, well, it's not a microbrewery, it's slightly bigger than that, but this is Wadworth's and Wadworth, and they have six special beers which they sell globally, and uh, they have a visitor center. But every morning, what happens is this when they first started brewing, the casks were taken from the brewery to the public house by horses. Yeah. And that was the only means of transport. So all the beer was carried by, by horse and cart. Now they've kept the tradition going. And every morning at nine o'clock, two sets of uh, Clydesdales leave the brewery and they go to one or two of the local pubs and still deliver beer. So it's part of the heritage, okay? Oh, and yes. they, they do it every day. So you, they go down, they come down the the road in front of my house. I mean, I see them every day. <laughs> they're on the way. I know where they're going. I uh, watch them go and come back. Um, but the, the beauty of this is that the horses are stabled um, near the brewery, but every year they get a holiday. And in the month of uh, August, uh, they get a month off. Yeah. <laughs> so the, 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 they're taking, they, 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 this is a true story. They, they have a pint of beer first. Yeah. And then they're taken off to a local farm and they're allowed to roam free for a whole month. And it's a tradition. You wouldn't you, you, if you search, you probably find photographs. And the moment they actually drinking a pint, they're probably being watched by a kind of about 200 people. Yeah. Uh -huh. Great tradition. Uh -huh. Yeah. And the, phot the photograph next to that is the Devizes Town Square. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, Devizes uh, has been around since, well, it's been around since forever. Uh, I mean, the church, uh, which is just down the road from me, was built in 1102. Yeah. So that's 900, nearly, well, it's 900 years old. Yeah. Uh, and there was a photograph on my profile today. Um, and that is amazing. But the town itself we became um when the railways came and the canals then it became an industrial town and still to a large extent is but the properties were built uh around the 17 1800 mark and they're still there and they're in use as banks and shops and it's just a beautiful place i mean it's surrounded i'm 20 miles from stonehenge i'm 20 miles from salisbury cathedral and 20 miles from Avebury. So it's sort of a great, great place, place to, to be. Absolutely. And I just mentioned Stonehenge, didn't I? It's a nice segue, huh? <laughs> That's brilliant, brilliant segue. That is, in fact, Stonehenge. Uh, to the left of me there is my partner, Angelica, uh, who's a German teacher. And uh, that's on the right of the photograph is Freya, who is Angelica's friend and came to stay with us for uh, two weeks. Uh, sorry, a week uh, earlier this year, and we all went to uh, Stonehenge and walked all the way to the Henge from the visitor centre. And it's just there's something about Stonehenge which is which is mystical. There's a sort of a feeling about when you're actually walking around there because the Henge is the in the middle of a site which is is miles wide. Yeah, so mm -hmm. there are uh, monuments and. Uh, archaeologists archaeologists rather busy all around that area because this is we're talking 4000 bc here um so that's when the land was settled and there are new findings every day really it's, it's one of the wonders of the world it has to be said
It really is. And you get visitors there from all around the world, like all the time, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you if you go any day that you go and it's open seven days a week and it's, it's looked after by English heritage, you look after a lot of properties in the UK. Uh, they've got a, a visitor center, which is state of the art, which explains how the Henge was built and why, how they got the stone from Wales uh, by boat into uh, England and then brought it overland. Uh, there's a restaurant and uh, a shop that's the commercial side of it but once you get away from that you're in the Wiltshire countryside and you've got a mile walk to get to the Henge and uh, it's just on a beautiful sunny day there is no better place to be on a wet day then you catch the bus <laughs> <laughs> but it, well, a great, yeah. and, and as you said the, the thing is that if you, if you sorry back to your point uh, that you will find tourists from all around the globe and coach parties who are on the tour of the UK, with Stonehenge is one of the places that people visit, whether they're from America or France or Germany or Holland or Australia or China or Japan, then one of the places must see is Stonehenge. Just the, you know, even aside from the the, the real mystery and, and the, the way that the stones are positioned and all the connotations with that, um, I don't know how far away those stones were formed and, and brought, but that's those are pretty heavy. That's the understatement of the day. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, if if you if once you get close to them, you see how how big they are. Now, remember that in those days time wasn't a problem, and what you actually did was to fell trees, make rollers, and then the stones were pushed forward, and then the rollers from the back are taken and put in front. And you just repeat the exercise. So you're actually pushing the stone along with uh, yeah. sleepers. Yeah. Um, but it, it, there were hundreds of people involved. I mean, we're talking, I mean, this is incredible. I mean, if we were to do this today, it would, it, well, I don't know whether we would. Um, but I mean, the stone came from, from South Wales, came around the Cornish coast, around Cornwall, and then uh, along the southern coast of England, and then was taken off the ships, and then boats rather, and then it was hauled across ground. How many miles yeah. across ground did these get? Oh, yeah. Stones? Miles, approximately. Less about about 80 miles across ground. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. Fascinating, really. You know, I think that people like myself who, as of yet, have not visited the UK, there's just <laughs> two understatements in one day. There's a lot of history in your area. Uh, there, there is a, a lot of history, uh, and there are several layers of it. I mean, this is the Neolithic era. This is basically thousands of years ago, yeah. and then you've got, uh, you know, I mean, go back to the 15th century in some towns. Um, you know, so we've got a great heritage, and it's well looked after. I've got to say this. I'll give a shout out to English Heritage. Mm -hmm. and the National Trust and private enterprise too, because all these properties are kept up to date and uh, maintained by both public and private bodies. And we're grateful for that, really. I mean, if you go, if, you know, I mean, it's commercial enterprise as well, because you, if you picture a devices that we looked at with the town centre and the statue in the centre, that basically was is being maintained by private enterprise, because it's the shops and it's the banks and it's the solicitors and accountants they're actually maintaining the buildings. So that's really fantastic. Yeah. yeah. And, and many reasons why you would want to maintain that. I mean, they're pretty endless, the reasons why you'd want to do that, you know. In, indeed. I mean, it, it, it is our heritage. I mean, we can't know where we go. I'm, I'm going to do it now. We can't know where we're going to unless we know where we've been. And in terms of where we've been, we're able to look around the town and the countryside and see how we got to where we are today and place ourselves in, in some context of that. Really great. Well, definitely yeah. something I would love to be able to uh, come visit over there and uh, see the great things and meet the people over there, visit a few pubs. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, anytime, just let me know in, in advance and uh, that can be arranged and we'll give you a grand tour of Wiltshire. That's right. And the other friends that you've made, around the UK as well, we'll give you a tour of their area. I mean, we used to have a saying here that with, with networking nowadays, 
it is possible to actually get a friend in every city so that when you do travel you know somebody in the city who you can meet up with and that's that's brilliant i mean that's the power of networking really is the fact that we know people around the globe who we wouldn't have known unless it was the medium of live video um and it means that you can travel the world and meet people in real life that is the ultimate goal absolutely it's really great so we've been speaking with stephen healy who has an udemy class actually on learning lightstream a uh, very user-friendly um what is the word intuitive thank you way to learn this you did a great job with your trainings i think that a key in not only in knowing the knowledge is, is really important but just your delivery um and even though you've got this cool english accent i could understand everything you said <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Accents, but we're not. We'll not go there. But thank you. Thank you for the phrase. It's. It's just. Uh, thank you. Uh, yes. Now about the course. Um, it is on Udemy. If you search for Lightstream on Udemy, you'll find it. And also, I can tell you that we're getting close to Black Friday, aren't we? Actually, yeah. Next Friday is Black Friday. Udemy's Black Friday sale is already on. And if you want the course for $10 to learn how to stream on Lightstream, then it's yours for the asking. All you have to do is go to Udemy. That's fantastic. And you know, there may be actually people out there that really aren't familiar with Udemy. It's U-D-E-M-Y, U-D-E-M-Y.com. Basically a place where you can, um, find really quality. There are pretty strict standards as far as the way that these videos or these trainings get on on the Udemy. Oh, it, it basically, before you can uh, start a course, you have to do a test video. And that test video is not, is first of all, for the quality of the video, it's got to be like we are high definition. Okay, mm -hmm. you can't use your phone to create a Udemy course. Okay. The second thing is the sound. You've got to have a situation because when people are listening to watching courses they're more likely to listen and do something at the same time yeah so you're on a different web page so the, the sound has got to be good so that, that you can't have any distortion so you don't want any reverberation or any echo you want to be able to hear the person clearly so you've got to go through those standards and just to, whilst we're on light stream i want to just mention this part of the light stream course was actually done on Lightstream. That's yeah. right. That's right. Yep. So the, the, the basically, I was able to use Lightstream to record HD quality video to deploy that in the course, and that's that's that speaks to the quality of, of uh, Lightstream's broadcasts because, as I said, the, the standards on Udemy are very high. And just to finish off with Udemy, Udemy has currently fifty five thousand different courses. They have uh, I think it's 13 million students. I might be wrong on that, but I think there's 13 million people actually taking courses on there. What you actually do is that uh, you find the course that you're interested in, just type in the search. I'm interested in Facebook Live or YouTube Live or photography or what it happens to be. You're given a list of courses. Those courses have been reviewed and Vincent kindly reviewed mine. And you can look at the reviews, you can read the reviews, just as if you were on Amazon. And you look at a product and you say, oh, I'm going to buy that. Let's look at the reviews. You do the same thing on Udemy. And then once you've decided, you can buy the, the uh, course and it's yours for life. Yeah. So you, you can watch it. You can rewatch it. You can, if it's allowed, you can download it. But once you've bought it, it doesn't go anywhere. So you, you take the course at your pace. So it's not like going to college where you've got to <laughs> attend college for 20 consecutive weeks you can do it as you want. So you get, you sort of do the beginner section and then the middle section and the end section, and it, you do it at your own pace. And uh, the other thing, I, there are two sides to this. It is brilliant for students because you buy the course and you know the quality you're gonna get. But it's also great for uh, lecturers because you're actually given total support by Udemy themselves. So shout out to Udemy. So the easiest way for them to find that course, would it be to go to your website or to Udemy? Uh, if you go to Udemy and you type in my name, 
you'll find it. So that's Stephen Healy, and that you'll see all my courses then. And uh, if perhaps you put a link on YouTube afterwards, that would be. I yeah, know we'll you do will. that. Absolutely. I know you will. You, yeah. you know it. Yeah, this is really <laughs> great. This is the first time I've live streamed. And, uh, you know, I've done uh, my fair share of interviews through different projects and so forth. Yeah. Um, but really, you've really been integral in me really taking this what I'm doing with Ramp up to the live streaming level. And I really feel that the combination of what it can do and how creative you can be with that. I had so much yeah. fun putting this together, the different scenes. Yeah. It, it was like, whatever you can think of to do, including short video clips, which I by on purpose didn't attempt this time, but you can really do some really great things with this. So I really commend all the hard work you put into um, elevating the live streaming community Stephen. you really have well, thank you i mean I, I just enjoy live video i enjoy yeah. helping people and yeah. we i mean we've got to know each other quite well over the months and i, I love working together simple as yeah it's been a blast and we'll continue yeah. to be because this is just the first show i've got many many more people some who i uh are already part of the live streaming community who i've connected with and um this is just a, a different way. It's a different way to try it out. Absolutely brilliant. So um, there will be, uh, this will be on the YouTube channel after the show, and it'll be fun to look back and see uh, how it looks on YouTube. It's pretty exciting. And YouTube is a very, very powerful. You mentioned this when we started the show, Steve. Yeah. YouTube is really, well, it's owned by Google. Mm -hmm. So as far as where it goes in the Google search, Google loves to promote YouTube. And it's pretty well acknowledged, I would say, that building a YouTube channel is not only not that difficult, it is certainly an investment of commitment, but it's one of the best things that somebody can do to help promote their business, or their cause, their yeah. art, their music, that sort of thing. Well, that, that, if, if you compare Facebook with YouTube, I mean, YouTube has 2 billion users and it's closed. In other words, Google can't see inside it. Yeah. YouTube, on the other hand, is open, isn't it? I mean, it's searchable. Google can see it. Yeah. So as you rightly said, when you're actually building a brand or building a band or whatever you're actually trying to promote, the interaction between Google and YouTube means it makes it a lot easier because not, not, this is incredible, I know, but not everybody's on Facebook. <laughs> and, and the fact is that if you go out to YouTube, you, you're reaching globally. You, you, you're not cutting yourself off from the majority of the world is not on Facebook yet. There are 1 billion users actually on YouTube. That's right. Yeah. So I agree. Right. And I certainly use Facebook. However, you, 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 we've all heard or all experienced this kind of closed sort of, oh, well, I thought you were seeing what I put on there, but YouTube, or excuse me, Facebook decided that you, for whatever their algorithm, they decided yeah. that you weren't going to see this. Indeed, that's it's in the lap of the gods, isn't it? I mean, you cannot. I mean, if if logically speaking, if you went out and you did a show with good content, and you got twenty people watching you, you could quite reasonably expect that the following week you'd have twenty two, then twenty four, then twenty eight, then thirty, and you'd gradually build up to a hundred. But it doesn't work that way, does it? You can go live once and then do exactly the same principle the following week and your viewing figures can be half. The quality is the same, content quality is the same, but you have no control over your audience. So I agree with you again. Really great, really great. Well, you know, it'd be fun to have you back on um, after I have a few other guests on to kind of do okay. some updates. Well, I, I want to turn the tables. I want to bring you back on when you've uh, when you've gone through your, your sort of current cycle and it would be good for me to chat to you because i want i'm i'm got, i've got to admit here i i would be challenged to actually create the scenes that you've done but i'm going to rise to that challenge and see what i can do oh cool yeah there's definitely uh for example if you'd like to do that there's obviously there's some photos of some of the projects that i'm working on some of the artists yeah. that i'm promoting and so forth so that that's a, yeah. i love that idea yeah. um I can even say I could send you a short video clip that you might want to insert. Oh yes, surely. Yeah. It's two hundred yeah. megabytes is the size. Two hundred megabytes is, is the limit. Yeah. Yeah, that's really exciting. Well, thank you, Stephen. This has been um, 
the first ramp lie uh, light stream show and it was been a thrill to have Stephen Healy of Wiltshire UK on the show talking about a lot of cool things and I really urge you to follow Stephen um, you have certainly your site on Facebook and what it, tell, tell us your website uh, my website is stephenjhealy.com um, but if you right I'm gonna right blow my own trumpet for two seconds sure. if you type Stephen Healy into Google you'll find me I like bringing Somewhere. up that Google thing again. That's that's I appreciate that. Yeah. Stephen, great talking to you. Enjoy. Now you've got uh, le it's eleven eleven here. It's in Colorado. Uh, it's eighteen eleven here. 18, 11. Vincent, I just want to say thank you. This has been a blast. I always enjoy getting together, and to anybody who's been watching, thank you. And uh, I'll see you. I'll be back. I hope to be back. Absolutely great, Stephen. Thank you everybody for watching, okay. and um, have a great have a great day, everybody.